the theme for the talk is aham brahmasmi a wonderful theme where we talk about the paradox of vulnerability and the power of ai right it's about being vulnerable and having the power when you're talking about being vulnerable and also having the power in the age of ai how is it possible is the first question that comes to mind i'm going to talk about aham brahmasmi and vulnerabilities and the power in the age of ai and i'm going to relate it to education that's going to be my talk today if you look at ai has made people more creative our creativity has been dependent on ai and generative ai so if you look at how creativity has happened in an exponential fashion the past two years thanks to ai it is making everyone creative our learning has become exponential thanks to ai learning has become excellent creativity has become excellent all due to ai so we are both more empowered and more vulnerable than ever before and that's due to ai we have become empowered reason there are systems which are giving answers the creativity has become fantastic because generative ai is able to not only create images is able to create videos it is impeccable emails that come in without mistakes why again generative ai but is it all really good in long run then what should universities and what should education do is everything going to be hunky dory going ahead if gen ai is going to teach everything to students well this vulnerability and power of ai which we are talking about the paradox is more visible in education than anywhere else getting students into classrooms is going to become all the more difficult if this is not understood well by teachers why education conventionally was for three basic purpose one is for knowledge creation second is to ensure that the discipline is built the third is about preparing the mind so if you're talking about preparing the mind well that's still there but the first one is about transferring knowledge well today a child with a mobile phone on hand is getting all the knowledge that he or she wants no problem at all why because at the click of a button you get the knowledge load a generative ai which is all the more given free and the teasers are there by all these telecom companies that you get it there so knowledge is available building the discipline is also happening because all the knowledge is there and the discipline is already built how you give the right prompt telling take the role of a medical doctor and who has got 20 plus years of experience in the area of eye surgery and then start asking questions it gives beautiful answers so the discipline is already built but preparing the mind is where still there is a lot of scope and that's the place university and educators have a big role to play now if you look at how a role to play happens we know that in this case we know more and we understand less that's what is happening we learn faster fantastic why ai is helping us but we reflect slower we have the tools of great power yet we feel deeply vulnerable how to use them let me go ahead now with respect to uh, upanishad quote it says vidyancha vidyancha estad devo bhayam saha the one who understands the knowledge and ignorance together is the one who becomes powerful what is this knowledge and ignorance together yes there is power in hand but is it really powerful is generative ai infallible is something we'll have to go ahead and definitely understand in the age of ai knowing how to use knowledge is more important than the knowledge itself well that being the case let me take this ai is actually a mirror what we are seeing is actually built on what we are prompting let me give an example here i did this experiment yesterday into generative ai i told that look david and santosh are fighting what do you understand you can go into my linkedin profile and see it's there as a post that's the last post that i did yesterday it says yes david and santosh are fighting then the next prompt i told there is a mob of people who are fighting with stick what do you understand it's really tense what do you understand it says oh is it so 
a mob of people are fighting, which means the situation is tense, it gives some answers. The next, I ask, create an image where Mother Teresa is fighting poverty. It takes some time and the image gets created. You know what's the image like? Mother Teresa is holding one fellow and that fellow's t-shirt is written poverty with a stick. Skinny fellow standing there. Will any sane person who understands who is Mother Teresa and even a class 10 student, if he is asked, tell me if you have to sketch Mother, Mother Teresa fighting poverty, will any sane person create something like this? No, isn't it? But generative AI, on which we all depend as many a time this current generation depends, creates that image. So that's why I say AI is a mirror. What we are seeing is what we are training it to, or all the assumptions and questions that we are training. Now, it's not only me. I am training the model for something like this for someone else to create another image. Is that right? AI is filled with bias. And that's going to be a huge trouble going ahead as well. So this power, so-called power, where we say, Aham Brahmasmi, I become the Brahman, I am going to create everything, I got the superpower on my mobile device, is filled with biases, and it is not going to be infallible. It's going to create a lot more problems than solutions. Well, using it for drafting a fantastic email might look cool, but I'm going to use it for anything and everything, possibly getting guidance on how to invest my money, to how should I go ahead with my health and my surgery. It's filled with biases and it's going to create problems in the future. But if that's the case, should we say no to it? That's not the solution which I'm going to talk about. So that's, the risk is not that AI will become powerful, but we will start using our own power is the problem. We will think that the system is infallible and our intuition, our creativity and our consciousness is what is being locked and kept, which is really bad. And if this is going to happen from class six on till graduation and post-graduation, where I'm going to lock my creativity and depend on a system to be creative, where I'm going to lock my intuition and my consciousness and ask a generative AI to be conscious and creative and being intuitive, that is going to be a recipe for disaster for the next generation. Well, that's the fear that is there. So that being the case, let me quote from Bhagavad Gita. Who's going to go and change all this? It says, where I am going to be responsible to go and lift myself. Someone else is not going to do it. I can't stop the agencies, the creative agencies, or the big players like the OpenAI or the Google or Grok or anyone else to stop creating models. Impossible. They'll keep creating models. It is on me to understand what is right and lift myself up. That being the case, not just consume answers, but question them. Possibly some might not even have thought that I'll create an image telling Mother Teresa to fight poverty. I thought about it, I created it, and that's what the image is. It is as recent as yesterday. So question what is coming up. Go ahead and question Gen AI, just not going and taking them. Only then the power can be unleashed in the right fashion. Not to understand the limitation, use tools, but understand that there are limitations. Understand that there are biases. And not just be users, but conscious co-creators. Then Gen AI will be a fabulous tool for us to use and to be of help. The heart of learning is what? Yes, AI gives us speed. It gives us efficiency. It also gives us personalization. Fantastic. But is that the heart of learning? The answer is no. Why? It is about presence, empathy, and meaning, purpose, and the pause between thoughts, right? The silence in which a lot of learning happens. That's the place where I think universities, educators, kindle the interest of students and make them creative, make them think. That's where a lot is there, where education can happen and a university can do a good job. Ena manasana manute, that which the mind cannot comprehend, due to which the mind comprehends, looks confusing. That which the mind cannot comprehend, due to which the mind comprehends. It's about not getting illuminated and seeing, but understand the illumination itself. No, that is the problem, biggest problem of education today. This is the fundamental problem in modern education, where we are, it's, it's perfected going ahead and getting answers, looking at the vessel, filling it, but not knowing why it is being done. Let me explain a little further. We teach students on what to think, but not about the nature of thinking itself. This is the biggest problem. And that's carried on to the corporate as well. I need people to solve today's problem. Give me coolies for the corporate world is nine out of 10 companies which are asking. 
I want them to employ them. Are they trained? Do they have skills? Come on, go. I am training drivers for cars. What about mobility solutions? I think that's the place where university educators and universities have got a role to play. Of course, we need to go and create drivers for them to drive the cars. But that is solving current problems. What about mobility solutions? I think that's the place where universities have to go and play a role. That is the place where educators have to go and make people think. And that's what not many are focusing today. And that's a pain. And that thinking, AI cannot do it. Reason, because it's filled with biases. So when you talk about Aham Brahmasmi and the invitation in the age of AI, it is about, I'm not separated from the world. I'm not powerless. But I create meaning and not the machine. Where I go and talk about is AI is powerful, no doubt about it. But the human conscious is limitless. AI can answer questions, it can compute patterns, but it is about the humans who can ask the right questions. It is only human can see the possibilities. I think that should be clear. We are vulnerable because tools are evolving rapidly. Yes, we are vulnerable. But we are powerful because we are the authors of those tools as well. So having said that, the future of education, three shifts that we must take is what is my take. First, from knowledge to wisdom, right? Knowledge is all available there, but yes, with biases, of course, when you're going to depend on a Gen AI tool, right? Facts are abundant, wisdom is rare. Teachers must become facilitators of judgment, ethics, and balance. I think teachers should inculcate the habit of asking right questions. That is about making the right prompts. Slowly, universities will shift of making people think and ask the right questions, which is not happening to that extent today, but AI will force us to do that. If not, universities and teachers will become irrelevant. We should encourage people to ask the right questions. It's about going and giving the right prompts, if you are asking me. Next, from competition to collaboration. Unfortunately, in this country, it is all working in silos. Engineering, medicine, liberal arts, all these silos, we're not talking about collaboration that's happening. Thanks to NEP, that collaboration is happening. Someone wants to take history, physics, mathematics, and economics, it's possible today. It was not possible about five, six years back. Thanks to NEP, we're talking about collaboration and not competition. I think that's one area where education should go ahead and do it more. The last but not the least is from fear to conscious use. I go and listen to debates of faculty members or even university leaders telling we should ban AI. No, that's not the way. If you're going to ban AI, students will find more and more ways to use it in a smart fashion. It's not about fear of AI, but it, students should learn how to work with AI and not hide from it. Going and empowering them, making them understand the right way of usage, I think is the role of educators and universities to do. So let me again quote from Gita. It says, Nahi jnanena sadrisham pavitram iha vidyate where we are talking about the two purified knowledge of the world is the true knowledge. It, here today, we talk about the knowledge. It's not the knowledge, it's not about data. It is about discernment. It's about ability to judge. I think that's what is a true knowledge, where we have to empower students to go ahead and judge. Discernment is the power that we need to go and inculcate in students. What is right, what is wrong. How to go ahead and judge things is something which has to be learned, not only at the postgraduate and undergraduate level, but right from the school education level itself. The new Brahman, as I call it, Aham Brahmasmi, in the age of AI, means I am responsible, I am creative, I am conscious. I am not replaced by technology, but I am enhanced by it. When I understand that I'm going to be enhanced by it, I look at it as a tool. I understand that it cannot be infallible. I understand that it has got biases in it. I understand that it's just a tool which can help me to become efficient, but with inbuilt biases, with inbuilt things that might not be right, once I get it, I think then I'll be able to go ahead and use it in the right fashion. The future of education is not artificial intelligence, but it is awakened intelligence. I think if we are able to understand this, there is a long way to go, and universities and educators will definitely have a role to play in making this happen. Thank you so much. That's Aham Brahmasmi and it's relevant to education as far as my view is concerned. Thank you once again. God bless all.